So what we're going to talk about today then is uh, geolocation. We're going to use the project from last time, so I have a copy of it, and I'm going to put today's date on it. So I have a copy of today's work, and we'll open it up in uh, Notepad. So just a quick reminder, um, going to uh, we're going to open this in in uh, in Firefox, and we can remember what we worked with. Now that we've got JavaScript, we're going to start using the console. Remember, we're going to pull up that developer's console, which shows us information that is not visible to regular people. So I've loaded up the project in uh, Firefox, and then you want to right-click anywhere uh, in the empty area, right-click, and then Inspect Element. You should get then the, the developer's panel, and then you want to go over to the console output. So it should be that you might get some feedback down there and the point of what we did previously was you you clicked on that link you get the pop-up for a quote-unquote login you can put in your name click OK and then a couple things happen you should get some console output but then you also get some feedback on screen on screen it said our name so we spent uh, last Thursday working on this the basics of um, JavaScript and then also, oh, did that run out already? Okay. Here's one more. Can you pass this one? Yeah, it'll it'll come to you in a moment. It'll it'll come to you in a moment, so you can just pass it down the lane. Yeah, it'll come to you in a moment. So go keep it keep it going from behind back. Thank you. So, the. Uh, the point of this is that it was capturing a name and then displaying it on screen. And that's what our code is saying with comments and such here and there. So very basic project, but this opens up a whole larger world of what we can do with JavaScript. So what we're going to do is talk about then geolocation, finding, having the JavaScript find our location and so um, that will then help us build this map. Now HTML5 has a feature built in an API which is just um, it's the easiest way to define an API. It's a set of um, a set of standards for you to do something. HTML5 has a way for you to access the GPS of your laptop or, or your mobile device. It's built in to HTML5. If it's HTML5, therefore, it might not work on older devices. Uh, and that's okay, though, because we're going to be targeting mobile devices and tablets, which, which are newer than older devices. And by that, I mean Internet Explorer 7, Internet Explorer 8, Firefox 5.0, you know, older browsers. So what we're going to do is go ahead uh, in, in your web browser. I'm going to open a new tab here. Go to your web browser and we're going to search HTML5 location. Just do a quick Google search, HTML5 location. You'll get many results, of course. Uh, I recommend some of these top results from some of these sites are pretty good to look at, like html5demos.com, dive into html.info. These are uh, these are sites that are pretty good for you to get an understanding about what's new in HTML5. If previously you've had some experience in HTML, this is what's new in HTML5. If this is brand new for you, uh, for many of us, this is HTML in general is new for us. These are other places that you can also go to and continue to learn in addition to w3schools.com, right? So we can get the information that I want to talk about um, from any of these results, but I'm going to look at, just because we've already had some experience with it, I'm going to look at the results. Hopefully you get one from W3Schools. Do you see HTML5 geolocation W3Schools? Mm -hmm. Hopefully you get that result. Click on it. 
you don't get that result, I got it from searching Google and searching HTML5 location. Notice there's no space in HTML5. It's HTML and the number 5. But anyway, let's look at the documentation here because this is a lot about how you'll be working eventually. Once you learn everything that you need to learn in these three months, and I'm not there anymore to come and help you, you're going to need to learn on your own. And then obviously the internet's going to give you a lot of great resources to learn on your own, some better than others. But um, I don't know if I've mentioned it in this class yet. We'll be looking at a very important website to find more info called Stack Exchange. Have I mentioned that in this class before yet? Stack Exchange? If I have not yet, don't worry, we'll talk about it. But right now, at W3 Schools, HTML geolocation is used to locate a user's position. The HTML5 geolocation API is used to get the geographical position of a user. Since this can compromise user security or privacy, the position is not available unless the user approves it. Um, so you might have been alerted in various instances when you're trying to use a website or an app that it first gets permission to check your location. That's built in. You can't get around that. But this has been supported with uh, Google Chrome 5 and up, IE 9 and up, Firefox 3.5 and up, actually, Safari 5 and up, and Opera 16 and up. So what we'll do is we'll use the get current position method to get the user's position. The example below is a simple example. So we've got the terminology here of method. I might have mentioned it before, but that's the technically correct term of when you see a JavaScript command that looks like that. When we created a function, we were creating a method, technically. We, remember, we had console.log and then the parentheses. Log.parentheses is a method of the console. So here we've got the get current position method. And this example code, we're going to copy and paste it and, and apply it, and I'll explain how it's working. But notice it's within script tags, so it's JavaScript. A variable is created called x. It can be called anything, of course. It's called x. Then we've got document.getElementById in quotation marks demo. What this is doing is it's storing a reference to some ID on screen into the x variable. And this is a very powerful method, as we'll see in a moment, to write code a little bit faster. So I'll get back to that in a moment. Basically, creating a variable that is keeping a reference of an ID on screen. Um, we've got then a f uh, the function keyword to create a function, specifically one called getLocation. GetLocation does not exist as a reserved JavaScript command or method. It's one that we've invented in this example. And a couple of things are going on. Something that we haven't talked about yet, but there's if and there's else. If statement, else statement. This is how our JavaScript can make a decision. For example, if you're hungry, you might ask, am I hungry? The answer is either I'm hungry or I'm not hungry. So in computer parlance, I might have the question, if you're hungry, go eat. Or else you're not hungry, so don't eat. This is a very simple conditional statement. There is a condition going on. Either something will be true, or else it'll be false. So here we're checking if we have the ability to access geolocation, do the following or else that must mean we don't have the ability to access geolocation so therefore the message that's going to be displayed is geolocation is not supported by this browser we'll get into more complex if and else statements definitely next month maybe a little bit in these two days here's our very first quick look at it this is a conditional statement so there's check it's checking a condition is this condition true can we use geolocation? If yes, then we have, okay, 
then let's run this command navigator dot geolocation dot get current position get current position is a reserved JavaScript command it's gonna try to check can we tap into GPS we're gonna get a pop-up that says would you like to allow location services if we say yes then that data gets captured by get current position kind of like we, we wrote the the method prompt remember we had prompt and that asked for a username if we added a username it would capture that data and do something with it get current position is gonna try to check the current position and do something with it the something will be executed here under show position show position is not a reserved JavaScript command because here it's defined function show position with the data that we get from current position do something with it basically display it on screen we're gonna copy and paste this into our project again I'm gonna break it down what we're doing and then we'll see how it works we need to copy everything inside of this not the script tags because we've already got script tags in our project so copy between var and the curly brace we'll go back to notepad we've already got a whole section of script between lines 5 and 20 so uh, give yourself a new line 20 and then paste paste what we just copied So the, the header is where our script section is, yes. So if you paste that in, it's going to be inside of the header, inside of the script tag. This assumes that there's a placeholder on screen to show the results. Um, we'll show it on the screen in, in a moment, but here's what I want to do. Um, again, line uh, this new line 20 here, it says, let's create a variable called x, which I think is a terrible name for a variable because it's not descriptive. But, okay, we've got a variable called x. And what we're filling it with, remember the equals, basically means take the thing on the right and put it into the thing on the left. So x is a container that we just created. And what we're doing is we are basically filling it with a reference to an object on the screen. There, in theory, should be an empty div waiting for us to display the coordinates. This is what this is saying. In the document, let's get an element with an ID of demo. There's nothing in the body at the moment that has an ID of demo. We'll create it in just a moment. So let's scroll down here. Let's find the body and on line 41 let's create an, a generic div container we will give it a unique ID so that then in our code we can reference it that unique ID just like the previous line there is inside the div tag ID equals demo without the pound sign you should be getting used to ID equals something class equals something no pound sign or dot but in the JavaScript or in the CSS if it's an ID it needs the pound symbol if it's a class it needs the dot So this is a placeholder that will display the results of the geolocation search. If I back up again to the script, that's what I've said right there. There is something on screen called demo. 
put the reference to it in the variable called x. The reason for that is that will give us a, a shortcut so that we don't have to write document get element by id over and over and over. We can just write x. <coughs> so previously on line 14, that's what we had. We had document get element by id username dot inner html. And we displayed your name is whatever. If we needed to do that in seven different places or seven different ways on screen, we would have to write document get element by id over and over and over. The shortcut here is to basically put that into this variable. A variable doesn't only can also hold not only a, a number, uh, but a word and a function or the result of a function or the result of a of a reference to an object in the in the document. So if we skip down to line 29 if we did get a positive GPS signal, then what would happen is x dot inner HTML. Notice that is a big time saver than the previous one way up here. Document dot get element by ID username dot inner HTML. That all of that part was replaced simply with x in this case. And then we say, okay, for that reference, for that generic div dot inner HTML, we're changing the property of inner HTML to be, it's going to display on screen, the word latitude. And then position.coordinates.latitude, position.coordinates.latitude, and, or in addition to, break, so a new line, longitude, and then position.coords.longitude. So this um, position.coords comes from here, position, this comes from having a positive geolocation result. If it was negative, it would never get to this part. It would instead, instead end here. On screen, it would say geolocation doesn't work. Let's see if this works, and then we'll further break it down. Let's save that. Run it in Firefox. Actually, I believe I remember that if we run it in, oh, uh, I know why. It hasn't. Um, we haven't. Tr we haven't triggered it. We have. Um, we have a function called get location, but we didn't trigger it anywhere. We didn't call the function. That's why nothing happens. So let's just say, to kind of force it to work right away. Let's say on line, uh, let's give ourselves a brand new line 32. All right, get location, open close parentheses, semicolon. On line 21, we've defined what get location is, what it does. But never in our code here have we said run that or execute that. If we call a function simply as its name like that, then it'll execute. So now let's try that. Save it and run it in Firefox. Make sure, of course, that you spell it the same way. At the top there, it's got a capital L. And here, it should also have a capital L. OK, I get a pop-up from Firefox. Would you like to share your location? I'll say, yeah, share my location. So I didn't get any result on screen. I took a quick look at the console, and it tells me x is null. As I said, we're a, most of us are on a desktop computer, so GPS doesn't quite work. If you're on a laptop, did this work for anyone? On a laptop? Yep. Right there. Raise your hand so the whole class can, can, can prove me right. So the whole class can know I've been proved right. So if you're on a, on a device that has GPS, then it should give you some result. Did you get a bunch of numbers? Just, just a moment. Just a moment. So, did you get a bunch of numbers? Not 
but did you get anything on screen? No, but no, but no, no error here. Oh, okay. Sorry, what was your question? How we have to type the get location? Yep, that's what I typed on line thirty-two. Um, okay, let me try one more thing. I'm gonna run that again. It's gonna ask me this time. I'm gonna click, not now. Oh, I think it has to do with this order. Let me try one more thing. See, sometimes it doesn't go, it doesn't automatically all work, and you have to troubleshoot it a little bit. Okay, um, it does work. Notice my example, it did work. Here's what's going on. Remember, um, I've said that basically our code is written. We run it in the web browser. The web browser sees it line by line and executes it line by line. Technically, because we have added this code before we created the div, it doesn't know where to place the results. All right? Let's think about it. It goes from top to bottom. So it sees all of this code, it gets then to this point right here, and it executes get location. So then it jumps back to that point, it checks GPS and so forth to try to show the result. But we haven't gotten to the point down here at the very end where it actually creates the placeholder. So it executes and then it goes through get location and tries to show it. Nothing happens, so then it goes on and it does the rest. And then eventually the placeholder is created, but by that time there's no more GPS data to display, in a sense. So actually, we should have this whole GPS stuff happen at the end of the document instead of at the beginning because it does matter sometimes this stuff matters the order that it's in and in this case it did matter there was no placeholder to display the data therefore nothing happened there was no placeholder created in time so here's what we'll do let's go right after line 42 where your demo div is at let's go right after that before the end of body slash body we can add another script section here. We can have script in more than one place in our document. And in this case, we'll, we need to have these two because we need to have this script happen after the creation of the demo div. So we've got a brand new script section right before the end of body. Let's cut and paste, not copy and paste, cut and paste. Let's move the code that we had at the top that we just put in down to the bottom inside the script tag. We leave the bar up there though, right? We'll take the bar no, we'll take the whole thing that we took from W3 schools. Oh, okay. yeah. and, it, and also the get location. So that whole bar and down to the get location, let's cut it and paste it down on the script. And now save it and run it again and see what happens. That's what it was trying to tell me. X is null, and X was the, the, the div. It couldn't find a div. So it wasn't a very friendly answer, was it? All right, save it and run it. Did anyone get any result? Yeah. 
Okay, good. Uh, if it didn't work for you, anyone need a little help? It might take a moment. It, it, it needs to connect, it seems, and then it'll show it to you. But if it did work, this is what you'll get. It asks you, share location? Say, yes, share location. Wait a moment while it checks the mothership, and then latitude, latitude. It often is going to be more accurate on a laptop or a mobile device than on a desktop. Question? Okay, so in your case, you were getting a pop up blocker. And then after you canceled it, then it worked. All right, anyone else? Did it not work? Uh, I have a list of my questions. Location of where browser, frequently asked questions. So then select between model and the location and then go down into the screen section by color. Well, remember I said you didn't want to cut and paste, not copy and paste. So this is actually getting in our way because it's a duplicate. So we're okay. just going to switch this. We only want to go to Do you have um, a number of 
Okay, so um, what we get then are just some is just some raw data. Uh, so again, to break it down, what's going on on screen? Right away, it prompted us. What's your location? It prompted us because again, the browser looks at all of our code line by line, and then eventually it gets to line 44 or so, and it executes that function, like when we had alert and then our name or whatever, it would just pop up right away. Remember when we did hello world with an alert? It just popped up. Because whenever there's a function called, just with its name like that, that means execute that function, run the function. What get location does, jumping back here, is then it goes through here. If we have the ability to geolocation, then try to get the geolocation. If we have geolocation turned off, then it'll just pop up here. No geolocation is available. So if I try to load this up in Internet Explorer 6 or something, it'll just jump to the second part, the else, because it says, I don't know what your location is. So it'll say, not supported. So, it then ran position, and then that's actually going to check for a positive or a negative result. Only the positive result has been coded so far, which is show position. If we do get a result, if someone does click share this location, this is the positive result, and therefore the definition of show position is down here, which is take this data that get position just acquired, take it, and then use it here. Specifically, display it on screen like this. Get the latitude of the data, get the longitude of the data, and show it on screen. And that's what we get right here. It says the word latitude, it has then 32, etc., negative 117. So San Diego area, latitude and longitude coordinates, 32 degrees north and uh, 117 degrees west. And then all the way down to the block or whatever down here. So the satellites are looking at us right now. Um, so it gave us the raw data and it showed it. Now what I'm saying, there could be a positive result, there could be a negative result. As in, we could get the data because someone says share it. Or maybe, what if we canceled it? We didn't account for that. The get current position method has built in what happens if you do get the data, what happens if you don't get the data. But we only wrote right here what happens if we get the data. Let's change our code a little bit here. Back to line 35. Well, we've got get current position. We'll put a comma after show position. We're in the parentheses. Comma. We'll say position fail. Capital F. These keywords here are completely arbitrary. We're making them up. The example used show position, but perhaps on another website it would be called location success or position success or whatever. That's because it doesn't matter what these two parameters are called here, we are defining what they mean down here. So we're going to then define what happens if position doesn't work. We've got the lines that define what show position um, means. So we'll need to create a new function that defines what position fail means. 
let's give ourselves a new line before get location on line 44. We'll write function. The name of the of that failure uh, callback function, which was position fail. Open close parentheses. Curly brace. Close curly brace. So the method get current position is trying to get data. If it does get data, it displays it under show position, and the data is called position. That could be anything we want. It could be a failure. That's probably giving us some, some data too, like a message or something. So we want to show that data that the failure is giving us. So we need to give that a name in there. Anything we want, we could also call it position. But it may, might make more sense just to call it message, msg. Or we can spell out message, I guess. And just to see, before we make it do something more special, we'll say console.log. Open close parentheses, semicolon. And what we'll be displaying in the console log is that data of message. Let's save it. Let's open the console first. Well, actually, we won't be able to because it'll just jump to it, won't it? But uh, let's uh, save it, let's run it, let's open the console, and let's see what happens if we say, no, don't share my location. Remember last time when we were opening the console? I'll show us again here. Um, I'm going to save it and run it. If you right-click, you have inspect element. And then we go over to the console. So it was asking us if the little window went away, uh, you can you can refresh it or you can click the little target and it says, okay, share it or not. I'm going to select the option, not now. Nothing happens on screen. Um, nothing happened in the console. But the console would be where it displays a result, either positive or negative. Or it may be that it is not our feedback of canceling. It may be actually that trying to load and the actual GPS itself reports a failure. It's actually nothing displays like I like I thought I would like I thought it would. Let me try it in a different browser. Different browsers behave a little differently. Position error. Hmm. So Chrome, Chrome gave me the result that I thought it would. But not Firefox, that's odd. So I loaded this in Chrome. I loaded the console in Chrome. Remember, just right-click Inspect Element. <clears throat> in Chrome, it's hidden under this little double arrow. And actually, I would recommend, let's just do this together so we get used to Chrome as well. We'll be using both. Here in Notepad, let's run Chrome. Let's right-click any empty spot and select Inspect Element. And then, at the top right corner, you've got this um, I, this rectangle in a rectangle. If you click that, it'll move it to the bottom, like Firefox. That's better. And then I'll see Console. So I never approved the GPS, and my Console displays position error. With some other data. User denied geolocation.
the point what I'm getting at here is uh, we'll, we're going to see many examples of JavaScript methods, JavaScript commands, that have what are known as a callback function, which is what happens after you run this function, after you run this method. And oftentimes there is a, there is a positive callback function and a negative callback function, or what happens if you get the positive result? What happens if you get the negative result? We're going to see a lot of that. Um, so here, then, in our code, we've tried to deal with that. If get position worked, then run the callback function show position, which is to display it on screen. If get position didn't work, then at the moment we're just putting it in the console. It would be better to display something on screen. It says, sorry, GPS failed. So that's what we'll do. Let's go back to our code. The console log output is fine, but instead I want it to say, well, I'll, we can leave the console log next line. We'll say x dot inner HTML, all in capital letters, equals quote, end quote, semicolon. There's our time saver. We don't have to write document dot get element by ID quotes demo and then dot inner HTML. We simply write X because previously at the top we defined that shortcut in a sense. X. Again, it's not a very good name because then I don't remember what X does. It should have a better name. But we're saying inside of that demo placeholder div will make it say something. And we've got it in quotes here because then that will literally appear on screen. We'll make it say, sorry, GPS didn't work. Now save it and run it in Chrome. I guess Firefox too. Um, save it and run it in Chrome and hopefully then this message appears on screen, not just something in the console. Okay, let me check you one moment. Uh, let me see if mine worked. Syntax error often means that there's some misspelling in the code somewhere. I'll check you one moment. There we go. So my um, Chrome is saying GPS didn't work because for whatever reason it didn't capture the coordinates, so it ran the position fail call.
So if it worked for you, this is the aspect of uh, this is the aspect of uh, debugging and and this is the work that you need to do to get this to function. Sometimes you're going to get an error that might help you figure things out. Let me make an intentional error here, um, and then I'm going to run this just to show you. Uh, okay, I got the GPS didn't work, but my my console my console for example it's giving me something that says uncut syntax error unexpected unexpected end of input what does that mean so the um, the thing is that this is trying to tell you perhaps where to look in your code you see on the right side for me it's telling me look in your file line 21 or 45 so this console is also useful to try to guide you to where your error is. Unfortunately, sometimes it's a general direction. Look in this general area. Because one error might not really manifest itself until other things happen. So if I go to look at line 21, it's telling me there's something wrong on 21. Actually, there's something wrong on line 15. I'm missing a curly brace. But it's saying, look on line 21 not that helpful. So unfortunately sometimes those error messages maybe what they actually say is very esoteric like what is a syntax error and sometimes it guides you in the right direction but that's what the console when we start to get more complicated we're gonna refer to the console more and more to see are there any errors can it guide me to a possible wrong line so at this point we did a little bit of uh, playing around with GPS Let's go back to, maybe you've still got the window open, hopefully. Let's see about going back to the W3Schools um, tutorial. This code that we borrowed, it explains what it did. Check if geolocation is supported. If supported, run the get current position method. If not, display an, a message to the user. If get current position method is successful, it returns coordinate objects to the function specified in the parameter, which is show function. And then show function um, gets to display latitude and longitude, or displays it. Very, very basic one, no error handling. This one over here has a little bit more error handling or rejection. Because again, remember when we, were, we had the prompt and it was log in? Well, what if we had put in numbers? That's an error. What if we had put in symbols? That's an error. What if we put in nothing? That's an error. We never handled any of that. We just said input anything into this prompt. 
we're kind of doing the same thing with geolocation here. Just try to see if it maybe works and maybe deal with the results. Uh, better software is that it tries to figure out what possible errors could happen and deal with them. And I believe I said last time, you know, you cannot, you can never make this foolproof because there's so many ingenious fools out there. And something's going to happen that you weren't in, encountering. This here is trying to see, okay, there might be an error. And other stuff we haven't talked about yet, we won't quite get to, but maybe there's a permission denied, position not available, timeout, unknown error. This will try to display different possible results of an error. Displaying the results on a map. To display the results on a map, you need to access the map service that can be that can use latitude and longitude, like Google Maps. So this goes on, you think, okay, I'll just copy and paste this. This won't fully work just yet uh, to give you a kind of map that we want. This will give you like a static map. This will create a map. This will check Google Maps, basically take a screenshot and show it on screen. But it won't be scrollable, it won't be zoomable, it won't be turn by turn like we want. We need more complexity for that. But just to see what this is trying to do show position. Uh, instead of what it did previously, we've got, okay, create another variable, call it latlon. What's going to be inside of it is the latitude and the longitude separated with a comma. So latitude, comma, longitude. That's being saved inside of the variable latlon, sort of like a shortcut. Then we're creating another variable called image URL. We're connecting to the Google API website and basically um, trying to access a map 400 pixels by 300 pixels and so forth. We're trying to create a map. On screen, document .get element by ID map holder, we're saying on screen display a picture, there's the image tag, and the source of the image is basically this placeholder map um, that used our latitude and longitude. There's latitude and longitude right there. So the GPS coordinates that we captured is stored in here. We're trying to access a Google map, feed it to those coordinates, it creates an image, and then on screen display that image. And that just gives you a basic map. Notice at HT, uh, W3Schools, you can try it yourself. So you can see the code live. Try it. Share location. It's going to try to check, hopefully, and then I get a basic map right there. It says I'm in Little Italy. Uh, because again, desktop computers don't have the best GPS features. I can't zoom in, I can't scroll around, it's not, an, it's not a, the kind of map that we want. What else? Location specific information. So um, our get current position has different um, data. This method, this JavaScript command, uh, has different um, results, different properties that we get if we do get a GPS location. We get coordinates dot latitude and longitude. We can also get accuracy. We can get altitude. How high are we from sea level? Altitude accuracy heading. What direction in the what direction in the compass are we headed? Uh, what speed um, are we traveling? And then we can get a timestamp. When did we access these coordinates? Taking all of these properties together, then we can create something useful out of them. Watch position. This is going to check that if you're moving around, it's going to show me here's my current position. If I was able to move uh, uh, the next the building down or whatever, the latitude and longitude would change because it would check again, did you move, and then give us the new coordinates. 
If we move some more, it'll give us new coordinates. But this is, this is updating itself to check, is there a new coordinate? And the way your, your GPS works on your TomTom -tom or on your device is that it's constantly checking, where is your current position? And knowing that, with a little bit of geometry and math, it can figure out your speed, it can figure out your direction, all of that. So we're going to take a break, and when we come back, well, we have some of this knowledge. We're actually going to make it then work like our vision is, a real map that will give you a location of this college or whatever you choose, and directions from wherever the student is to this college. 7.13, we'll take 10 minutes. We'll be back at 7.23. Uh,